Hey YouTube, this is uh, another exciting day in the life of Fred Haskell. Uh, today the object is to cut this oil drum apart and we're going to cut the top off basically where that line is and then it's going to stop and come this way. So you can see that this cut went nice and straight as, uh, as far as I've gotten so far. At this point I guess I'm going to come down to this end and uh, cut that line. So now we got this cut done uh, mostly pretty straight. All right so for what it's worth now you can see oh there's my wife coming <laughs> making her debut appearance on YouTube. <laughs> I get the the other lines laid out and we'll finish cutting the top off. Alright, and there you have it. We got her busted open. As you can see, I cleaned about four gallons of sludge out of, the, out of this tank. Nasty stuff, but it's pretty well clean in there now. There's a film that I'm gonna wipe up. I'm gonna dump some speedy dry in there and sweep it all around, clean up the rest of the crud. Here we are. Get this thing cleaned out. You can see it's uh Pretty, pretty dry and clean. There's a little, little loose speed dry left in the bottom, but all it's all been dried out, cleaned out. Much better than it was. Okay, so now I've cut the uh, other end off of the what was that top piece there, and we're gonna fit that onto the front of there and weld it on. Okay, so it's another day. As you can see, it's kind of cloudy and overcast today. But we got a little more done. Uh, went out and got a barrel stove kit. And so I got the door on here now. So that works out pretty good. Here's the top of the holes drilled out. And now with a damper bolted on. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I have these feet that came with a barrel kit, barrel stove kit, and I'm going to weld them onto the bottom of this thing so that it stands upright. Uh, what I'm doing is I found a level spot on my floor for the feet to sit, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and position the barrel, get that into a level position, and then I'm gonna bolt them on. So for the feet, now that I got the holes drilled, you can see that there's a gap. The 55 gallon drum and the 275 gallon drum have two different diameters. So there's a gap there. And also I found that trying to hold the screw on one side and put the nut on on the other was a pain. So. Now that I get the screws actually in place holding it where I want it, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a tack weld, hold those in place. I'll do that to both sets. So for this back set of legs, I'm not going to get so fancy. I'm just going to tack them on with a welder. So now as you can see with my evaporator sitting on level ground, the tabletop will be nice and level. And that's important because that keeps our pan level. You don't want to have your pan unlevel. 
because your sap will be deeper in one side and shallower in the other, and the shallow side, when it gets closer to the syrup, could end up burning. So if we were to make fire in this whole thing, that would use a lot of wood. Uh, it'd be hard to tend the back of it. So what we're actually going to do is the fire box is just going to be in the first half towards the door, and then there's going to be a divider, a bulkhead that's going to come up, and it's going to taper up towards the flue underneath the pan. That's what this piece here is for. This is what I'm going to be putting in next. So this piece will sit in here like that. The firebox will be here. The flue gases will taper up under the pan and go out the flue. So what I've done now is I've made some brackets out of some angle iron that I'm going to weld onto the inside at some spots. This spot here six inches down from the top of the uh, table. So I'll put one on each side, one there. These spots up front here, they're 24 inches ahead of there, and those are nine inches down. So it'll be tap tapering three inches in two feet uh, as it goes up towards the flue. That'll hold that piece of steel in place for the bulkhead. Okay, so now I got the brackets welded in. Okay, so now you can see that I have the bulkhead, is what I'm calling it, um, kind of tacked into place. So right here will be the firebox. Over here is where, it, if you see, it's going to have an angle to it, so the flue gases will travel up and they'll, they'll be forced up towards the pan the further from the fire they get as they go out, out the flue. So I, I got a few bricks in there just to show you. Um, from what I've read and seen, I, you want to insulate the inside, even certainly the firebox, but even this part, you want to insulate it with some sand and bricks to keep it so that the heat is actually going on your pan that you're boiling the sap in rather than conducting out through the, the massive body of this uh, oil tank. Plus it keeps it cooler to the touch, not that you'd probably want to touch it, but in case you did, if uh, it was going to be bricks on the sides as well. So we'll give the whole inside an insulating layer of, of brick to keep the heat confined to the pan.